I don't know how to start. Do I introduce myself? Are you recording? Yeah. You just start with the question. Should I introduce myself at, first? Uh... No. Hi, my name's Haley. I'm the artist behind Desert Mouse Tattoo, and I'm here to answer some of your questions about how I started tattooing. Who motivated you to start tattooing? Um, definitely my friends and coworkers when I was working at Trader Joe's. They all said that I would be really good at it, and I had another friend who actually also became a tattoo artist, and he kind of helped me figure out that this is what I wanted to do. Why and how did you start? I wanted to because I was taking a break from school. I was taking a gap from college because I didn't like online school with the pandemic. So I took a step back and talked with my friend Roger, who's also a tattoo artist, and decided that this was something that I wanted to pursue. I wasn't sure if I was gonna go back to school, but. I knew that I wanted to tattoo, so started working towards that. What made you want to be a tattoo artist? Definitely the idea of being able to do something creative for a living was super interesting to me. Uh, I never thought that I would be able to combine creativity and being an artist with a real career, so it was super exciting that I could combine the two. How did you know you wanted to start tattooing? I feel like I already answered that kind of. Um, was it for the Riz? <laughs> start by apprenticing or did you teach yourself? I personally taught myself. That was something that I kind of discussed with Roger when I was looking into starting tattooing. Um, we talked about how in Utah specifically that is an option. You don't have to do an apprenticeship. So I ultimately decided that I wanted to do that myself and luckily I had a lot of coworkers who were willing to let me start by myself without going through and doing an apprenticeship. Um, are you self-taught or did you just get your business license and stuff? Like I said, I am self-taught and I did get my business license and I looked into the specific requirements in Utah, which leads me into this question. Um, what was the process required for Utah and was it hard to do the process? For Utah specifically, I'm not exactly sure if it's the same in each city. I'm in Cottonwood Heights technically, so long story short, talked with the business licensing in Cottonwood Heights and asked them what needed to be done before I could work out of a studio. And they told me that I needed a business license and my bloodborne pathogens training certification and I needed to be working out of a health department certified space. Those were like the three big things that needed to show that I was okay to start tattooing on my own without an apprenticeship. Um, how did you get the training needed to prevent bloodborne pathogen problems? I honestly a lot of this sounds silly but like a lot of it is totally common sense and you just want to assume that everything that you're touching is covered in nasty diseases so you want to wrap everything up but to prep for it i i personally didn't like do any studying i just wanted to go in on the first test and see how i did and it was pretty easy like i said it's pretty straightforward but i'm sure there's a lot of resources online for that if you feel uncomfortable or if you want to prep before taking the test i did mine online through i think it's did mine online through the, I think it's CPR.org or something like that. It was a very, it's like one of the first things that pops up on Google. So, how did you ask people for an apprenticeship? Like I said, didn't do an apprenticeship. I thought about it for a while and I actually started building a portfolio and then decided that I didn't want to. I could see there being pros and cons to both. I'm not gonna say do it without an apprenticeship. I just felt comfortable with my art and my personal style, so not saying that you can't like sharpen up your skills with art but i could see an apprenticeship being more useful if you want those drawing exercises and more than just the safety aspects so uh, for me personally i did not get an apprenticeship and that's why what was the process of being self-taught for me personally living in utah uh, like I said, I just talked to the business licensing, I don't know, department? I went online and sent an email to a business licensing woman in Cottonwood Heights, asked her what I needed to do. She said that I needed to get those three things that I said, the business license, bloodborne pathogens, and then a space that was health department certified. But before that point, I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos and 
asking other artists questions, um, just like some of you guys have been asking me. So I wanted to, you know, contribute to the information that's online about this. I feel like most people online tell you that you can't be self-taught and that you shouldn't be self-taught, but in Salt Lake City alone, I know quite a few artists that are self-taught, so if people are going to teach themselves, I'd rather them do it safely. I just made sure that I was watching videos about setting up and breaking down my stations properly, using the right cleaners. I looked at Utah's health department's guidelines for what cleaners needed to be used and how long they needed to be used. I started watching videos on how to understand needle arrangements and how to read needle packages and I started doing research on machines and you just have to, I mean, it's hard to say because it's not a one-size-fits-all glove, if you want to put it like that, but start looking into every specific question and there's pretty much all of the answers on YouTube, if I'm not gonna lie, and then if not, feel free to reach out and, you know, nicely ask tattoo artists that you admire and that you look up to and I'm sure that they'd be happy to help because everybody wants you to be tattooing safely, so yes. You always been good at drawing did you take any classes yes I've always been good at drawing it's like the one thing I'm actually good at <laughs> like I never put me in front of a math class not my thing put me in college not my thing sit me down to do some art I'm doing good so yes I've always been good at art uh, my dad's an artist, my grandpa's an artist, it runs in the family. Did I take any classes? Yes, I took classes all through middle school and high school. I took AP art, I took art history, I took other art classes, so yes. Lots of art classes, lots of drawing since I was little. Did you do any kind of art before becoming a tattoo artist? Yes, I did. I you know, outside of class, I used to run an Etsy shop called Desert Mouse Design. That's where my name ended up stemming from, and that was a pandemic project. I sold stationery and stickers, and it was really fun. It kept me busy, but yeah, so I did that. I would also sell prints and stuff, so always been making art. How long were you drawing before you started tattooing? Like I said, I've been drawing my whole life. I started when I was younger. I would color in my dad's old drawings in his sketchbooks, and I just started tracing and copying his designs, and then started taking art classes, and it all went from there, so yeah. Where did you start practicing? That's kind of going back to when I was working at Trader Joe's. I had a lot of friends who were also my coworkers that worked at my store and they were super willing to let me tattoo them, which was huge. I had a coworker who was moving states and he encouraged me to give him my first tattoo, which was huge. He didn't care that it wasn't gonna be perfect. He just wanted me to do the damn thing Thing, so I did it and luckily it turned out good enough. I'll insert a picture so that you guys can see but it turned out well enough that my other co-workers and people who knew me as an artist from school were willing to let me tattoo them. I also gave free tattoos for about a month, month and a half until I found a studio space so that was huge too. Everybody likes the idea of a free tattoo. Do you remember the first tattoo that you did? Like I said, it was on my coworker James from Trader Joe's. He let me do it. We did it out of our other coworker's basement. So it was kind of a funny, random memory. And we did it super late one night after work so that we could get it done before he moved. Uh, I totally remember it. It took a long time. It was a big piece. It's, it's still one of my favorite memories, so. Where did you buy your equipment? How did you know what you needed? I bought a lot of my equipment when I was starting from Amazon, which isn't always the greatest place to buy things. It worked for me because I wasn't 
at the time technically like business licensed and working out of a safe space I honestly was tattooing my friends out of my home and at their homes. I did my best to make them safe spaces by wrapping things in saran wrap and making sure I was using the right cleaners but um, that's not ideal so until I was allowed to buy from the licensed tattoo shops here in Salt Lake, I bought my supplies on Amazon. I used recommendations from other YouTubers who will include down in the description box if you guys can watch their videos because they were really helpful resources. But um, I used a ton of YouTube videos, bouncing back to YouTube. But uh, yeah, that's how I picked out my machine. That's how I picked out gloves that I was using, all sorts of different supplies. So do your personal investigation. Like I said, it's not a, a one-size-fits-all sort of thing. You gotta just find what works for you. And then to bounce on that question, how did you pick out a machine? Any good starter recommendations? I used YouTube to pick my machine out. I found a machine that was in a reasonable price point. I knew that I wanted to use a rotary pen so that I wasn't dealing with a cord. Um, I knew that I didn't want to use a traditional like coil machine or even a traditional like rotary machine. So that kind of helped me narrow it down. Again, do your own research, figure out what route you want to take with that. And then there's tons of different options depending on what style you're going to be tattooing. I just kind of wanted a does everything machine because I knew that I would be doing shading and line work. So I ended up picking the Mast Archer, I want to say it was, and it was great. I used it for a long time, really enjoyed it. Honestly, it would still work. I just ended up upgrading to the Axis Valhalla more recently, but that is a little bit more of an investment. So I would check out Mast Machines if you're looking into a starter machine. I think that they're really great and they're accessible. And then all of my other equipment, like needles and stuff, were also purchased through Amazon. But as soon as you can purchase from licensed tattoo shops, you're gonna get sharper, better quality needles. Did you? How did you find a private place to tattoo out of? I got really lucky and my family's friend who is our esthetician, she does my facials. I've known her from uh, previous appointments that I've booked with her. She she was renting out a room in her business building. It's a building where there's separate rooms that rent out to individual businesses. And right as I started making an Instagram, putting it out there that I was going to be doing this more professionally, she reached out and was like, hey, we've got this space for you. Would you be interested? And I immediately pounced on it because that was one thing that I was really nervous about finding. But if you don't have a connection like that, uh, um, just start looking at commercial spaces. It's kind of hard to find it, but drive around, look for places that are leasing, and call and ask questions, because I've done that too, and it's uh, it's not that hard. You, you can totally find little spaces in a bunch of different like community business buildings or just brick and mortar storefronts. It depends on what your price range is and what city you're looking to find a space in. So yeah. And then I have one more question that I, didn't really categorize into any of these places. I wasn't sure where to put it. So how and when did you start feeling accepted by the tattoo, tattoo community being self-taught? Um, this was something that was super stressful when I was starting out. I was so nervous because like I said, there is a very big stigma against being self-taught, which is understandable. You, it's a scary thing and not everybody should just be teaching themselves. You should be taking the time to make sure that it's done safely, but it is also just stressful being accepted by a community that's pretty tight-knit. It took me a few months to get comfortable reaching out and befriending other tattoo artists, letting people know that I'm a tattoo artist because I was so scared to say like, oh, I'm self-taught, I didn't do an apprenticeship. But the more I posted, the more I followed other artists, I realized that it wasn't totally unheard of and that there was plenty of other artists in my area at least that were self-taught. So. Um, it, it took a few months to get comfortable and it wasn't always super friendly from platforms and other artists so it took a minute but I had a lovely couple of friends who were also tattoo artists reach out and I didn't know them at the time and they were super 
friendly and welcoming, gave me the little boost of confidence that I needed to feel accepted, and it was huge to, to receive those messages from them saying, you know, we see you, we see what you're doing, we're really proud of you, if you have any questions, reach out. Um, not saying that that's always the case, but I got really lucky and made friends after a few months of tattooing and growing my business online and stuff, so yeah, it took, it took a few months, but now everybody's so sweet it's a really cool community to be to be a part of so yeah here's another question that wasn't asked on my instagram when i did the q a uh how did i practice or what did i practice on i guess i guess it was sort of now that i'm thinking about it but i want to reiterate i didn't practice on fake skin orange peels anything really i don't think i was even expecting to do my first tattoo when it happened it just happened so quick because my friend was leaving and moving out of state so my practice was on human skin and that may or may not be comfortable for you uh, you might want to tattoo yourself first you might want to tattoo fake skin first i just have personally heard that nothing obviously reacts like real skin so i was like you know what we're just gonna go for it i'm just gonna do it and I did it, and luckily nothing bad happened. But if you need more practice, there's pig skin, fake skin, orange peels, melons, there's a lot of other things that you can use if you wanna practice with your machine before diving in and doing the real thing, so yeah. So those were all really great questions. I know that those were sort of vague answers, so if there's anything specific that you guys have questions about, totally ask in the comments section. But to summarize everything, if somebody asks me how I became a tattoo artist, this is my response always. I taught myself. I chose not to do an apprenticeship. I got lucky and found a space to tattoo out of privately pretty early instead of working out of a studio, which worked for me because I wanted to do my own thing. I knew that from the start. I did months and months of research on setting up, breaking down, tattooing safely, needle depth, tattoo machines, Every single thing you could think of, I just watched lots of videos, read lots of articles, did my personal research, asked friends who were tattoo artists, and started finding out a system that worked for me. I worked at a place where I had lots of willing co-workers and friends who would let me start my, my business and my career using their bodies as my canvases, which I know isn't always the case. I got really lucky and was surrounded by super accepting and sweet people who wanted to see me grow. And, you know, after that, it's just practice, 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 tattoo, 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 do lots of tattoos, post all of your tattoos, get your, your face out there on the algorithm, get your work out there, and, you know, eventually it'll catch on and the flame will catch and your Instagram will grow, your portfolio will grow, you'll make more connections, and yeah. And you got